production of the J.R. Eldridge Show is made possible with financial support from Arnold, Batson, Turner & Turner, Attorneys at Law, Blake Bell of Edward Jones Investments, the accounting firm of Turner, Rogers, Manning & Plyler, PLLC, Southern Bancor, Mary and Martha's Florist and Gifts, Jostens, Doctors Rob and Gary Rucker, Taylor King, Personal Injury Lawyers, Twin Rivers Health and Rehabilitation, Welch Funeral Home, Roger Wingfield of State Farm Insurance, and Southwest Sporting Goods. This is the J.R. Eldridge Show with the coach of the Arkansas State Champion, Football Badger. Joining Coach Eldridge today is your host, Caleb Byrne. Welcome back to another week of the J.R. Eldridge Show. I'm your host, Caleb Byrne, and we're joined as always by Coach Eldridge. And Coach, we have a really exciting week this week. We get to talk about Friday night's game, a big Badger victory over Gosnell, Gosnell, excuse me, and then um, next week's game against a big rematch versus Warren in the second round of the playoffs. Yeah, we're really excited. You know, the first thing we're excited about is, is number one, just the way our players were able to go out uh, Friday night versus Gosnell and, and uh, for the most part play a really, a really good game. Uh, felt like our energy, our effort, and our focus and practice all week leading up to the Gosnell game uh, was really, really good. Uh, you know, and, and the closer you get to the finals, obviously it's, uh, it's fewer teams, but it's also uh, teams that really want to keep playing. Uh, so I think having effort, energy, and focus in practice is going to be a key for us uh, if we want to move forward. Um, and, and so that, that was huge for us going into the Gosnell uh, game. And, you know, other than a couple of, um, of miscues on special teams, which were made up for by our defense, I uh, was really pleased with how we played. Uh, felt like our players just, they really got after it. They established, uh, you know, uh, physical dominance, uh, played really uh, violently, and, and just look forward to watching these highlights and, and, and talking about how, how our guys played. Yeah, and Coach, it was a really an all around dominating performance from the Badgers and resulted in a 37 to nothing victory. Uh, you don't really expect those kinds of wins in the playoffs. Well, you know, uh, leading up to the game throughout the entire week, uh, you know, I felt like uh, Gosnell, just watching them on film, they were a really f physical football team. Uh, they had some players that really, uh, that really stood out to me, that number 34, number 44, number 24. Uh, and then their quarterback, he had, he had made really good decisions uh, on film. And uh, one of the advantages we felt like we had was uh, that they played so many of them both ways. They didn't have as many players. Uh, we also felt like we could gain an advantage on special teams, even though that uh, in a couple of areas that didn't turn out to be the case. Um, but I uh, feel like our, just our, our defense and our, you know, and our offense were able to, to really overcome that and, um, and just felt like we, we were more violent. Uh, than they were out there on the field Friday night. All right, Coach, let's take a look at some of those highlights from the game. Uh, opening kickoff here is actually going to be returned by Gosnell. Not, not often you see a kickoff able to be returned, and they have a decent gain getting up to the 25, 28-yard line, and that's you know one of the better kickoff returns we've seen against the Badgers this season. Yeah, they had a couple of them. Uh, we, we've got to get better at how we're fitting and how physical we're playing on, on headhunters, uh, you know, and not relaxing, thinking that Gabe is going gonna, is gonna to kick it in the end zone every time. Uh, so we've got to get better right there. And the defense here on the first drive really coming out um, – you know, stopping those gaps and, and keeping the Gosnell run game from going. And then a muff punt here could have resulted in a bad situation. Uh, Gosnell gets good field position, another chance with the ball, but the defense comes up strong once again. Yeah, this is that situation that I was talking about, our, our special teams. We don't field the ball cleanly, give the ball back to them right off the bat in better field position. Uh, but again, our, our defense, I just, I was so proud of our defense. Kyron Harrison played an excellent game. 
I'm sure we'll see another big highlight from him here in a minute. Uh, so really proud of the way our defense stepped up and made up for that mistake on special teams. Able to field the ball well there, and the Badgers offense comes on the field and a nice pass to Buster Thomas, first play of the game. Yeah, it was really, really good, uh, good setup uh, right there. We felt like we could get the play action right off the bat. Uh, it's not something that we normally do. Uh, just Buster, we really wanted him to just turn and get vertical. We feel like I felt like he could have he could have scored on that play had he gotten vertical right there. Zon Hatley, nonetheless, able to jump in the end zone, and then this interesting two point conversion here. Walk us walk us through what happened on that play. Well, first of all, we trade the three men from the left side to the right side. Uh, we've got a seven man surface right there. Uh, we've really got about three or four different options. We used one option versus Malvern. Now we use another option where we pitch Buster the ball. Buster is able to throw it to Tatami in the end zone for the two point conversion. So just giving, giving those future opponents a little bit more to practice for. In a couple yeah, weeks. that's one of, the, one of the ideas behind it. Also uh, trying to find an advantage that we can get uh, if we need a two point play. We felt like going into the game that Gosnell was going to go for two every time. So we were definitely gonna do it two times in a row. Um, you know, once we scored. All right, the Badger defense coming back out here, a fumble forced. Um, Harrison returns it all the way to the end zone, and this is huge advantage early in the game. Yeah, this is an outstanding play by Kyron. He actually strips the ball, picks the ball up, and scores with it. Uh, just an unbelievable uh, defensive play uh, by Kyron Harrison. He's done that stuff all year, last year, um, really since he was a ninth grader, so really proud of the way he's continued to play. Goodman slips on the kickoff, still manages to kick it within the five yard line, and then the headhunting team does a much better job here dropping uh, the defender within the 15. Yeah, we're much better right there. Everybody fitting, get a good kick, uh, not much of a return. We didn't allow them to set their return up. Uh, we beat them with speed down the field. That helps us out a lot. Field flips for the second quarter. So Badgers have a 16 0 lead going into the second quarter, and um, defense just continuing to dominate in this game. Yeah, one of the advantages I feel like that, that we were able to have is just our, you know, as much as they run the ball, you know, all week, we're able to prepare and put ourselves in position to make plays. Coach Kaiser, Coach Chandler, Coach Myers do a great job setting up the game plan, uh, and then our players did an excellent job executing the game plan right there. Really nice job a minute ago. It was, I think it was Elijah Wheeler in the backfield disrupting the handoff and then sacking the quarterback after the fumble. Yeah, it was a uh, re really good job uh, by Elijah. He's continuing to get better. He's only a sophomore, but doing great things for us on defense. Um, offense has stopped here after you know some good field position, uh, forced a punt, but Candy Turner does a nice job on the quick kick, and it's going to give Gosnell some bad field position to start their next drive. Yeah, that's one of the things that, that I, I still feel great about on our, our punt uh, unit is we've been able to continually uh, put put our opponents in in bad field position so that was that was a positive on our special teams there um, another another time forcing Gosnell to punt taking the ball back for the offense um, and then a nice play action or excuse me read option here Cannon Turner takes the run long way 30 plus yards all the way down inside the 30 yard line yeah these chunk plays the the explosive plays uh really you know uh, give us an advantage when we're able to to just move the, f the football down the field uh at will especially when they're playing uh multiple players both ways um and just really dominate very quickly moving the football down the field uh so great job by our offensive line great job by our runners there uh Point after is good, and so 23 to nothing lead now for the Badgers, um, and they just really continue to dominate in this in this ball game. Yeah, I felt like um, you know another advantage that we had. Uh, we we were a little bit concerned about Gosnell eating up the clock, and they they ate more clock than uh, than a normal spread offense would. I mean, they were getting their their play calls from the sideline. The quarterback would run over, get the play call from the sideline, and then come back to the huddle. Uh, so we wanted to make sure that we, we, we did something with the football every time we got it as an offense. We were able to do that on every drive except for two. We punted uh, once in the first half and once in the second half, so that was really good by our, by our offense. Yeah, another punt here. It's Gabe Goodman 
um, getting the ball away this time. A really nice punt. And he's really come along this year, both in, in, both in his kicking game and his punting game. A lot of improvement. Yeah, Gabe uh, just continues to be a weapon for us and, and put us in, uh, in, in really good situations with field position when he punts the ball. And then uh, he's been lights out um, on, on field goals. I think he's 9 of 11 right now uh, throughout the season. All right, so uh, missed a play here in uh, coming out of halftime. It was a uh, fail to recover a kickoff by the Badgers, and Gosnell gets good field position, but the Badger defense comes up strong and makes up for it. Nice interception. Right. Excuse me, this is the end of the first half, isn't it, right here? So it's a nice interception by, um, by Gabe Goodman. Yeah, very, Excuse uh, me, by Cannon Turner. Yeah, very minimal time left on the clock. Uh, great job by our defense. Great job by Cannon just making a play right there. Uh, getting that interception, um, trying to uh, trying to score before half, um, and we're able to move the ball here uh, a little bit. We got the PI uh, earlier on Victor, um, so you know we were able to get a get a first down right there. Excuse me. So right here is after that halftime kickoff, and so Gosnell gets the ball, really good field position to start the second half, and the Badger defense still comes up strong. Yeah, this is, uh, this is really what I was talking about earlier, just our, our defense being able to, to make up for mistakes. Um, and, you know, really one of the great things that I feel like our defense coordinator has done, Coach Kaiser, kind of the mentality of if they're not in the box yet, then it's not over. You know, uh, a lot of times you get in the goal line area, the red zone area, uh, in a defense, you know, it, it's tough to get stops there and, and uh, feel like our defense has just done a great job of that. Yeah, and really that's, you know, been a trend over the past few weeks of a bend but not break approach on defense. Yeah, so hopefully we, we continue to, ha to have that trending in our, in our defense and uh, continue to coach that up and continue to, uh, to just uh, play as hard as we can. Really, really nice job here. Um, Cannon Turner's throwing the ball a lot better in this game. Than he, he really showed a lot of improvement in that area and doing a really nice job Friday night, you know, hitting his targets and uh, Badgers able to get some long pass plays. Yeah, it's a really good job uh, seeing that seam route open, uh, going through his progression. Did a really good job seeing Ruble and, and putting it on the money for Ruble right there. Uh, Gosnell's return man breaks through the coverage, but Gabe Goodman does a nice job. Last man back makes a tackle. Not something you, you might not have seen that from Goodman a few years ago, but he's really improved in that, in that area. Yeah, we, we put him through our tackling circuit. Did a great job there. Uh, got the face mask call, but, uh, but really, you know, we'd rather have a face mask for 15 yards than we would six points uh, going against us. So great job by Gabe. Um, so that once again gave some good field position to Gosnell. Badger still able to uh, break out from that and um, keep them from uh, scoring a touchdown. And then Badger offense here, uh, Buster Thomas with a nice trick play, good throw to Alec Rubel, and Rubel breaks it for a long game. Yeah, this was a huge play. Um, we've been practicing this play for probably three or four weeks now. Uh, finally get the opportunity to use it. Uh, Buster makes a nice throw. Rubel does a great job catching the ball and uh, making some yards after the catch. Yeah, Buster's, you know, once again, you know, taking the handoff, making some nice runs. This play, uh, getting into the end zone is going to be called back for a hold, but something, something interesting on that play is Josh Wallace wasn't at fullback. You don't usually see Wallace playing on offense very often. Yeah, he comes in in one of our, our packages uh, at fullback uh, because we want Rubel on the edge outside. Uh, so he comes in in that package right there uh, for us. So. Um, you know, if we could eliminate that holding call, we'd, we'd be in the, in the end zone one play earlier. Yeah, Badger's still able to get in, a, I believe, a, is it a 30 to nothing lead at this point? I think so. And so uh, Badger defense coming out, uh, looking to keep Gosden off the scoreboard, looking to get that mercy roll in place, and still some good effort from um, the Badgers. They're able to get downfield a bit here. Um, but even in the red zone, Arkadelphia is still able to keep him off the scoreboard. Yeah, that's a great job. I mean, Malcolm Turner makes a couple of really good plays uh, in this uh, drive, and then uh, linebackers, I mean, uh, doing a great job, or D-line uh, doing a great job not allowing them to get in. Big stop on fourth down, and Badger offense coming on now. Uh, not great field position, but still able to get some movement. And I think we see Buster Thomas in on offense now, so this is – after his 37 nothing lead here. 
Yeah, Buster uh, did a good job at quarterback, and then uh, you saw Keelan Nelson break an explosive run right there, uh, and uh, totally new offensive line was in at that point. Uh, so it was really great to get uh, some playoff experience to the younger guys, and um, you know, uh, just um, those minutes count. Um, and really excited about our, uh, you know, those guys that came in on defense, being able to hold them out, and then also us be able to move the ball. Uh, sufficiently enough, uh, able to run the clock out and, um, and finish the game off. So let's talk a bit more about the defensive performance. Um, the Badgers defense has dominated now for a few weeks in a row. That's two, two consecutive shutouts for Arkadelphia. Um, can you talk a little bit about you know, what goes in that dominating effort on defense? Well, I think, first of all, you know, uh, Sundays go into that uh, when we're game planning and putting together a plan to stop their, their offense, Coach Kaiser. Uh, and our defensive coaches, Coach Chandler, Coach Myers, put a great plan together. Um, you know, and then uh, the, the real challenge is being able to, uh, it really doesn't matter how much us as coaches know. Um, it's really more about how much we can relate to the players and get them to execute on the field. Uh, so I feel like the, you know, defense uh, has done a great job the past several weeks of really being able to apply that coaching execute what we want them to execute, fit in the right spots um, against this, uh, this run-heavy team. Um, you know, that, that's a huge thing for our, our defense to be able to do. And, and really, it's, it's alignment, it's assignment, um, you know, and, and, and being able to, to, to adjust on the fly to whatever that offense is doing. And, and I feel like our coaches and our players have done a great job of that. Were you able to put, put together a defensive player of the game from this week? Uh, really, what we've done in the past and what we did last year um, is, you know, we don't care who gets the credit. Uh, we stopped giving players of the game after after week 10. Um, you know, uh, there were several guys. I mean, Kyron Harrison just played outstanding. Uh, our defensive line, I mean, I felt like, uh, you know, Ricky Rogers, uh, Terrell Sumler, uh, you know, Keandre Dawson. I mean, I could go through our whole defensive line uh, and talk about how well they played. Uh, and then the linebackers just being able to fit off of that. Um, you know, Carlos Haney had a huge game defensively, flying to the football, uh, did a great job. Yeah, and then on the offensive side of the ball, we saw um, some different things on offense. And one big thing that I noticed was motion. It seemed like there was motion on almost every play on offense. Is that something you're trying to work into the offense as the season moves on? Well, we have, uh, and we've kind of steadily worked that in, uh, but you're, you're exactly right. We felt like uh, we were going to be able to gain an advantage with some of the motions uh, that we were able to do because on film we saw that they uh, either they adjusted how we wanted them to adjust so that we could get something to the backside, or uh, they didn't adjust to the motion uh, to the play side and we were able to get, get numbers on the play side. Uh, so. You know, uh, I felt like, or, or really, our offense coordinator, Coach Moreland, uh, really felt like that uh, that we would be able to gain an advantage, um, you know, either by misdirection off the mo motion or being able to gain a number to the play side uh, on the motion. Excellent job putting together game plans, and then Coach Matlock doing a great job with our offensive line. Uh, so. You know, it's kind of the same thing as our defense. Coach Moreland's been putting together great plans for our offense uh, our, and, and Coach Matlock, and then just defensively the same thing. Uh, but that motion, we felt like, really gave us an advantage on Friday night versus Gosman. Yeah, and then finally, Coach, one player on offense that I thought really played well was Alec Rubel. He's a guy at the beginning of the season, you know, didn't get a lot of catches, was really big last year. Beginning of the season, started off a little cold, but he's really warming up now. Had a touchdown. Uh, reception this week and, and did a really nice job on offense. Yeah, he really did. He had, uh, gosh, he had four or five pancakes in uh, blocking. Uh, he also had uh, a rushing touchdown where we ran the trap on the goal line. Then he had a touchdown through the air. Great throw by uh, Cannon. Great catch by Alec. Uh, you know, and that's one of the things that, that I love about Alec Rubel is, you know, his, his energy effort and, and practice habits uh, are just outstanding. Um, and and it, it always leads, uh, leads into a, uh, you know, a, a, a good performance in the game. All right, Coach. Now let's look ahead to next week's game. It's going to be a huge game next week, a rematch of last year's state championship. 
this time the Badgers have to travel to Warren. It's going to be a tough test for Arkadelphia. How do you think your team's going to going to fare next week? Give us a preview of, of the game. Well, you know, I think um, I think we just got to have a great week of practice. I mean, that's that's the the bottom line for us is if we can have that energy, that effort, and that focus in practice, uh, you know, I think we're going to put ourselves in position uh, to uh, to have a great game. Uh, you know, we've got to make sure that we don't have those special teams miscues uh, that we had this past week. We've got to make sure that our defense continues to play well and our offense produces when we've got our chances. Um, you know, but, but all of that is done in practice. If we want to do it in a game, we've got to be able to do it in, a, in practice. Uh, we're looking forward to the challenge. I mean, uh, Warren's a great football team. They've got good players, uh, you know, but we, we, feel like, uh, we feel like we do too, and, and we're looking forward to a great week of practice, and we're looking forward to the challenge of going to their place um, and, uh, and, you know, playing as hard as we can, doing what we're coached to do, uh, and, and we look forward to it. And this is a Warren team that's a bit different from last year because they're missing their main man right now. Traylon Burks is out with an injury. So he was really the key guy in last year's state championship game. Now they're going to have to put in a much more well-rounded effort. Yeah, they are, uh, you know, as far as their, uh, you know, but they, they've been missing him for, I guess, since week six or seven maybe. Uh, you know, and Traylon Burks is an outstanding football player. Uh, but they've got other outstanding football players on their team. They've, they've really found a way to, uh, to get in a rhythm offensively, even without him. Uh, they've had guys step up and on the defensive side of the ball uh, without Traylon Burks. And, uh, you know, uh, very impressive on film. There's guys that, uh, that really compete very well uh, for Warren. I mean, number seven uh, for Warren does a great job. He, you know, um, he plays anywhere from safety to linebacker to corner. Um, he, he's played at running back, he's played quarterback uh, in their heavier package, he's played uh, wide receiver, you know, so, uh, and they've got several players like that that play on both sides of the ball and, and that also uh, really compete hard and make plays on both sides of the ball. So, uh, you know, we're looking forward to the challenge and, and, um, and we've got to make sure that this week in practice we do what we want to do. Yeah, and Coach, how, how might you game plan differently for this game? I know last year um, Warren came out against Arkadelphia and really loaded the box, and they really were working to stop Arkadelphia's run game, and they did that for, for a large part. But then Ken Turner went and passed for over 200 yards against, against Warren. So is that something we might see again this year? Maybe. You know, uh, they, uh, they've got uh, – defensively, they've got, um, they've got about three coverages that they run, um, and – you know, they've got one that's a, a, a pass-heavy coverage uh, in their secondary. And what they did versus us last year is more of their run-heavy run uh, look. Um, so we've got to be prepared for both. Uh, we've got to understand that, uh, uh, you know, um, we've got to take what they're giving us uh, offensively, uh, you know, and find those, uh, those spots that we feel like we can take advantage of offensively. Uh, and we've really got to attack those those um, those scenarios, um, you know. So I can't really predict because they've done both things. I mean, versus Helena, uh, the you know in in that Helena film, uh, they did both. They they had uh, they started out in what we would call silver coverage, and they moved to brown coverage uh, later on in the game to try to stop the run. So so they've done both of them. Uh, and uh, it's hard to predict. We've got to be prepared for both and then uh, and find out what, what's going to be our best way to attack them. Um, you know, but again, uh, they've got plans as well. Uh, so we're just looking forward to, uh, to being able to get over there and compete as hard as we can and do what we're coached to do. Yeah, and, and Coach, seeing this, this good passing effort last, um, this past week against Gosnell of Cannon Turner and the rest of your offense, does that give you a lot of confidence heading into this week that you can do that again? Well, it does. You know, uh, but the thing about football is, uh, you, you know, you've got somebody on the other side. They're going to hit you back. You know, they're, they're going to try to do what they can to stop you. So do we have confidence in it? Yes. Uh, do we, uh, you know, but, but the biggest thing, again, for us is, you know, if we want to do it in, game, in the game, we've got to do it in practice. And, and so we're going to try to make sure that this week in practice, 
we're going to give the best look that we possibly can to simulate what they're doing defensively for our offense and then to simulate what they're doing offensively for our defense and the same thing on special teams uh, so that we can try to create that that competitive environment in practice uh, so that when we get over there um, you know um, we're used to what we're seeing uh, and I think that's the that's a real challenge for everybody um, you know um, and, and so that's what we look forward to doing this week in practice and and I've got confidence in 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 our football team as far as their demeanor as far as the way that they approach things the the way that they've competed the way that they fought back from adversity so uh, you know as far as confidence goes you know I, I feel like our, our players have have continued to come to work every single week, and I look forward to uh, to the same thing from this week. And then, Coach, you know, going to Warren, that's a tough place to play. Warren has a lot of history in their football program and, you know, a lot of passion around town for, for the football team. And so how do you prepare yourself for going into this really tough environment in, in Warren? It's somewhere Arkadelphia is not really used to playing. Yeah, I, I think, uh, you know, one of the things about our conference, though, is that, that you, you do have to play at some tough places. Uh, you know, and so hopefully those, you know, those games uh, throughout the season, I mean, we had to play at Wynn as well. Wynn's got a lot of tradition, very, very similar uh, to, to the Warren type tradition. Um, you know, so I feel like we've, uh, you know, we've been in those environments, uh, you know, and, and one of the things that we've got to make sure that we do is not allow those types of things to distract us from, doing the two things that really, really matter. Because the two things that really, really matter on Friday night are gonna be, are we able to execute better and are we gonna be able to play harder than our opponent? Uh, so if we can focus on those two things uh, and not get caught up in the other things about where we're playing or, um, you know, or anything else that could be a distraction from those two main things, uh, then I think we're gonna be all right. And then, Coach, finally, I mean, this past week, the Badgers made some really uncharacteristic mistakes um, on special teams. And if you were to make those next week against Warren, it really, really could hurt the team. How do you eliminate those mistakes and, and seek to make sure they don't happen again? Well, we've got to make sure in practice that we're, we're taking those, uh, those times that we use toward those specific special teams. Uh, we've got to take them, take them more serious, and we've got to make sure – that uh, we've corrected the mistakes that we made uh, and that, uh, that if we want to do it in a game, that we're going to do it in practice. Um, and that's on us as coaches as far as making sure uh, that we keep, keep the, those teams accountable, uh, that special team accountable to, uh, to doing it in practice. And then uh, it's on the players as far as making sure that they're taking their job seriously in practice this week. Uh, for those specific special teams. Right, Coach. Well, we're all really excited to head down to Warren on Friday night uh, for a really, really crucial playoff game. It's, it's win or go home for the Badgers, and uh, it's going to be huge. So, Warren, Friday night, 7 p.m., come out and support the Badgers. If you can't make it there, tune in on the live stream, ArkadelphiaBadgerTV.com. The Badgers win. We'll be right back here next week with the J.R. Eldridge Show. So, we hope to see you then. The J.R. Eldridge Show is sponsored by Blake Bell of Edward Jones Investments, Welch Funeral Home, Southwest Sporting Goods, Arnold, Batson, Turner & Turner, Attorneys at Law, Jostin, Doctors Rob and Gary Rucker, Southern Bancor, Taylor King, personal injury lawyer. Mary and Martha's florist and gifts. Twin Rivers Health and Rehabilitation. Turner, Rogers, Manning and Plyler, PLLC. And Roger Wingfield of State Farm Insurance. Join us again next week for more Badger football action with Caleb Bird and head coach J.R. Eldridge.